It's time for another episode of the Cultural Hall. As the music would tell you, it is an Articles of News episode. But guess what? Oh, hey, hang on. Wait a minute. This is your first time coming to the Cultural Hall. Well, you won't notice any difference because you've never listened to an episode before. But you long timers, you lifers, or you converts, you'll notice that there will be a difference because we're going to have a lot of different hosts of the news. Now, they're not all going to be together because that's like herding cats and I just don't have the energy. Not today, not tomorrow, not this weekend. But one-on-one, -on -one, I have asked several of the news hosts to pick four or five stories that they really want to talk about. And in the order that I recorded with them is how you will hear it in this episode. So we begin uh, with my friend Megan Mitchell. Good to have you here, Megan. Thank you so much. How are you, Richie? I'm good. You know, a couple things. You said that banter is one of your favorite things uh, about mm -hmm. the cultural hall, and I'm really pushing this news agenda. So I uh, I would yeah. like to say uh, uh, just a couple things bantery. Uh, when we spoke yes. last, I mentioned that I do not have a nickname for you, and I have a nickname for you now. And and I I've think been that, waiting all day. <laughs> I think that you will hate it. Awesome. But, what is but, it? but I will heretofore call you Megan the Mitch Mitchell because for some <laughs> reason the Mitch sounds so fun to me that I just want to call you, oh, you know the Mitch? Yeah, Megan the Mitch, Megan the Mitch Mitchell. I love I it. Know. I I love it. I love it so much. It's not at all what I was expecting. Okay, okay. Not even a little bit. Usually people go lean into like the MM. Sure. Yeah, you know, Megan obvious. Mitchell. Low-hanging fruit. Very low hanging. I love it. I love it. Plus, and, I, think, uh, I think it it makes it seem like you're taller than you are, because you're just bite size. Maybe that's a reference to M and M's. But when you hear the Mitch, you think of like a like a tall brassy woman. Brassy, sure, tall, not right. Brassy, brassy, yes, tall, not tall, yep. not even a little. Yes, uh, Richie, I love it. I might okay. put it in my new like Instagram bio or something. Heretofore. Also known as Megan the Mitch. Megan I'm, the Mitch. I'm obsessed. So uh and, awesome. and, and sometimes just the Mitch. I'm here with I'll, the I'll Mitch. I'll take it. Oh my uh, gosh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> uh the other thing that I will say is uh be sure that you have subscribed to the Little Lessons podcast because yours truly, that is me, uh, I'm going to be a guest on that, and I'm interested to see uh where that goes with Megan at the helm. Megan the Mitch taking on Megan Richie the Mitch. Stead. Um, I'm so excited to have you on my podcast. You're like my first big fish oh, to land stop. for an interview. I'm so excited. I'm like probably going to have a little fangirl moment or something. Oh, oh. I'll probably embarrass myself, but I'm so excited. The so only excited. thing that I ask but, is don't let me take yes. control of that conversation. I, I control the Sounds conversations good. here as I rightfully should. Do not let me take sure. control of that conversation. Deal. I'll just say, Richie, shut up. Thank you. Stop. No. Whoa, whoa. Okay. The Mitch has spoken. The Mitch. <laughs> so, uh, Richie, can I tell you one thing really fast? Yes. So, um, I'm, I think I'm like your, your newest co-host for Articles of News. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, so excited. I feel like a part of a new little family that I didn't ask for, but I'm so excited to have. Um, but I think I manifested it to happen. Okay. Is that weird? Yeah, I, I would so, love to hear what in the world you're talking about I'll, right now. I'll blaze through it really fast. So um, probably like a year ago after you and I first started, because um, you were my podcast consultant coach, and um, my husband was like, "I well, he's like, what do you want to do as a podcaster? And I said, I would love to be on the cultural hall. Mm. And he goes, well, why don't you just ask Richie if you can be on the cultural hall? And I'm like, uh, that's not how it works, yep. friend. You don't just yep. go to Richie Stedman and say, hey, I want to be on your podcast, right? And then you asked me to be on, on articles of news and I got excited. And then you asked me to come back and then come back. And I'm like, dang it, I made it happen for myself. And I'm pretty excited about that. Well, 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 thanks. I'm glad to have you. <laughs> It's excited that she is officially a part of the even more secret, uh, I would even say sacred, uh, cultural Absolutely. hall host panel group, which you can't buy your way into, you can't beg your way into or ask your way into. I have to invite you into that group. So welcome and and, uh, and thank you for all that you do for that. Uh, one last thing. 
before we get into uh, your five articles of news. And I'm just going to kind of banter around the articles that you wanted to talk about. Uh, and then we'll kick you out. You don't get to say anything. You're just done. And we move to the next co-host. Um, but I will say uh, a lot of great feedback about our last episode with Kelly Kiter about should we bring back polygamy? Uh, I have enjoyed all of the off mic conversations with people about that. Uh, both, you know, sort of agreeing with her and also those that go, wait, what, what was she even saying? And also those people that go, I could not be more opposed to what she said. And that is what I love about the cultural hall. So if you have not listened to that, that is the last episode that we posted just last week. You can check that out and be able to listen wild. to that. Uh, and then a, a little teaser. I don't do this very well, but because I'm so ahead on recording, I should let you know about some of the episodes that are coming up. Um, there is a, a Latter-day Saint translation of the New Testament. No, not Joseph Smith. Uh, BYU professor has put that together. It's incredible, and he is so great. Uh, he is a upcoming guest. In fact, he'll be later this week as a guest uh, in the cultural hall. His name's Tom Wayman, and you can check that out. And that's a, a conjunction with Coford Books, so a shout-out to them. Uh, Edge of Mormonism, that's Christian Kimball, who is Spencer W. Kimball's grandson. Uh, it's Living on the Inside of the Edge, uh, a survival guide, oh. talking about kind of being on the fringe of Mormonism, his experience, and then certainly uh, what his book is, what it isn't, and, you know, talking about the survival guide. Other things, I talked with uh, Gary Boatwright, who is in charge of all of the church historic sites. Oh, cool. And, and as part of that episode, you learn just how dumb I am as far as how many church historic <laughs> sites there are. So look forward to that. Uh, we talk with a with a gentleman about accountability. That was a phenomenal interview. I didn't know how that was going to go, but our friend, Mr. Mayor, his cousin is this gentleman who speaks all over the world about accountability. That's a great episode. Cool. And then perhaps my favorite, uh, my uh, a friend of mine through another job that I had, her name is Abby. She wanted to come on the show and talk about what she thinks kids are doing wrong these days. So it's a what's the matter with kids these days episode. Of Get off my hall. lawn. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. But she's 100% nice. spot on. I can't wait. I have a lot of feelings about what kids are doing wrong these days because I have yeah. teenagers. Yeah. And there's uh, lots I, of teenagers doing things that are wrong. Right. And, I and I'm not that... talking like the bad things. I'm talking like manners and yeah. Oh, yeah. courtesy. Yep. And attention and yeah. self-esteem. And we get into all that stuff. Uh, so awesome. if you if you are a um, Patreon saint of the Cultural Hall, you already know about all this because the videos are there. They're available and you can watch most, if not all, of these interviews as they've been posted there. Uh, it's worth becoming a Patreon saint. Go to patreon.com forward slash the Cultural Hall. Megan, story number one. Wait, hit it, Peter. Okay, story number one. Okay. All right. So Mitt Romney's in the news. For saying and doing something controversial. Now I have to lead into this by saying Mitt Romney might be might be my favorite politician ever. He's I, I'm all in the Romney camp. But um, at the State of the Union, which was last week, mm -hmm. I don't know when this is coming out. It was yeah. sometime. Um, he um crossed paths with George Santos out of uh, New York, and he was shaking hands, and he looked at Santos and said, "You don't belong here." <laughs> Now, it's, or it's it, important, we don't belong. <laughs> it's important to put George Santos into absolutely. context. Otherwise, absolutely. Yeah, no, but everybody's like, him... Romney's just being a jerk, right? Yeah. yeah. But so George Santos is a freshman congressman out of New York. Um, he's Republican, and he is currently under an ethics investigation for several lies that he told um, in his on his resume and his campaign, um, potential um, uh, faulty reporting regarding finance, like campaign finance. And there he was right in the front row, shaking hands with the president and all of the the high ranking officials, you know, comes up to Mitt Romney and Mitt Romney says, dude, you shouldn't be here. You should be mm -hmm. in the back. You're under an ethics investigation, you know, and um, he said maybe George Santos said something to him. He couldn't hear it. But Santos tweeted out, hey, Mitt Romney, just a reminder that you will never be president. Classy. And to that, I'm sure Mitt Romney's like, OK don't want to be anymore. Like not, it's not, a, not on my plan, not on my trajectory. Um, but yeah, Romney says, you know, 
that he embellished his record. Look, embellishing is saying you got an A when you got an A minus. Lying is saying you graduated from a college that you didn't even attend, and then he shouldn't be in Congress. So, and that's a lot of one of the things Santos will... did as well. He said that he graduated from a school that he did not graduate from, right. and that he worked for a company which he did not work for. Exactly. So Romney, in my in my opinion, is completely right. Not only should he not be there in the front row, he shouldn't be in the building. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of people on the right and the left who are praising Mitt Romney for saying what everybody's thinking, you mm -hmm. know, and I not in this particular article that I read, but in another one, there was a tweet from Santos who said, Mitt Romney, that's not very Mormon of you. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's where you're wrong, fella. Because it's not very member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. If we're going to split hairs, <laughs> and, and and to be clear, Megan is holding a microphone, which she could drop right now if she wanted to at the end of that statement. <laughs> Give it up for the Mitch. All right, so, <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I just it's an interesting position that Mitt Romney is in because mm -hmm. so long as he wants to be a senator from the state of Utah, this state will elect him. Yeah, agreed. Right. There there are a contingency of people that are like, no, we hate Mitt Romney. He's a, you know, a, a, rhino. a rhino, all these things. Right. He he will, so long as he runs from this state, uh, win. And I've got to think that he just loves that. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hey, and you, you know what? Yeah. What? Kick me out. Un Unvote me <laughs> right. if you want, guys. Exactly. No? Exactly. Yep. What you going to do? What you yep. going to do about it? You like run against me. I'll still beat you. Yeah, you know, uh, he's got my vote for many reasons. Uh, I'm firmly in the Romney camp. So, <laughs> story. Love, love that he said it. Love that he did it. So, story number two. I love this. Okay, so Richie, why are Mormons so susceptible to Ponzi schemes? Uh, why are members of the Church of Jesus thank Christ you. of Latter Day Saints the Mitch? Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I mean, so a really great episode about. Uh, this is the one that we did uh, about affinity fraud with our friend uh -huh. uh, Mark Pugsley. It's episode 502. I'll leave a link for it in the show notes. Yeah. And and my my suspicion is is just because we and and lots of groups of people do this, but we especially do this if it's like, are you part of the club? I know what that what being part of the club means to me. Right. I'm assuming that means the same thing to you. Same club, same club. Take my money. Right. Right, right, exactly. So out of Las Vegas, there's a $500 million fraud case, Ponzi scheme going on with, um, I believe everybody who's been charged are members of the church who were targeting other members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, over 900 investors between 2017 and 2022 were affected by this. Um, what's interesting is that both the church and the FBI have told members of the church about affinity fraud and to stay away from it. Like, don't be a victim to it. Don't do it. So it's interesting to me that it keeps happening and that Utah has more Ponzi schemes per capita than any other state. And we're the first state that created a white collar crime registry for this. So mm. like it's, it's in the, it's on our minds, right. To try to do things about it. But yet, it's still happening all the time. And I don't. Well, here, here's why. Think of your favorite religious leader that you've had in your adult mm -hmm. life. Okay. Thinking of that person, man or Absolutely woman, doesn't matter. Person. But that person comes mm -hmm. to you and says, hey, hey, the Mitch, I, uh, I've got a way for you to make 15% a month on mm -hmm. money. Are you in? You go, oh, I mean, oh, man, I've had this opportunity to really feel guided by this person. I look at this person as not superhuman, but mm -hmm. certainly, you know, as a, as a spiritual guide, as a, you know, something like this. Right. He, he would never. Right. An affinity fraud, a Ponzi scheme are these people. Right. I can see those people. I know what that looks like. It doesn't look like brother this or sister that. Right. No. And, and I definitely see where you're coming from. Um, I am a little bit probably of a different animal because I would look at that religious leader and say, <laughs> OK, you yeah. know, like, no, no dice, because if I I could be mistaken, but I believe there's even things in our handbook of like our administration handbook that says, like, 
beware of this. Sure. Don't enter into this. And I've, I've read those things. So like I said, I'm probably a different animal, but I do see that there are people who are not as dialed in on this as like I might be. And then, and I, unfortunately, when I, my husband, I used to live in Colorado and we oh, knew that of is a bishop. Unfortunate. Good point. That right? is unfortunate. I know. <laughs> but we, we knew of a bishop over there who had this incredible art collection, right? Mm. I mean, we're talking original Rembrandts. We're talking Gutenberg Bibles, millions of dollars worth of art that like the Louvre wanted and the Met wanted, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he would go around and showcase it to stakes and just say, no, I'm just I, I keep it and I show it off so everybody can see the talents of these amazing artists who portrayed the life of the savior. Right. Come to find out running a huge Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. All of this art was purchased off of money that he had frauded or defrauded. You know, mm -hmm. that he had taken sure. from from people, including members of his ward, you know, and and was living like a whole other life, like a whole other life, you know. And so I just like I, I'm lucky that I have had that experience, because now if like a bishop or a stake president or a religious leader came to me and was like, I can make you money, I'd be like, sure, give me, you know, give give me a break on my tithing. I'd rather, you know, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do five. Listen, you invest in award funds and I'll do 5% this year. Right. How does exactly. That sound? How does that sound? Exactly. Exactly. You know, and it, and it's sad to me because there's people who are losing money that they'll never get it back. Yep. And it's all based on trust. And, um, and yeah, like you said, being a member of the club and that's yep. unfortunate. Well, and so. on, on a really low scale, I see this occasionally um, when I wear dress shirts as a DJ and my garment line will kind of show. People oh. treat me different when they see that. The celestial smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah but people genuinely will engage me differently at sure. public events with that. That's not a Ponzi scheme. That's not affinity fraud, but it is a different treatment of like, hey, right? I know who we are. Right. I know what you do. I know what we, yeah, exactly. right? am I right? Can you right. get a load of this person? And I'm like, why are we talking about this? Right. Oh yeah. I wore a white shirt. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yep. Excellent. All right. You guys. Story number three. All right. Do you like trashy TV? Of course. All right. So I have, have admittedly never watched an episode of the real housewives of Salt Lake city. Okay. Um, but there is one member, a cast member, not the one we're thinking of, another one who's embroiled in a legal battle right now. So not mm -hmm. Jen Shaw, Heather Gay, um, who was herself a member of the church. She attended BYU, served a mission, and then left the church. Um, she tried to trademark the phrase bad Mormon for her book. And the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is like, uh-uh, nope. Um, because they own the trademark on the word Mormon in mm -hmm. a lot of different facets. Um, they are not trying to tell her that she can't name her book Bad Mormon, but they are telling her that she cannot sell merchandise that has that phrase on it. Yeah, she um, wanted to do like it's, sweatshirts it's, and mugs and stuff like that. Sweatshirts, tank tops, and, and even venture into like the entertainment sphere with like a Bad Mormon Enterprises production company and like mm. podcasts and things like that. And the... I think rightfully so. The church is like, no, that's gonna, that's really gonna be a conflict for us. And we own the copyright on the word Mormon, not the word bad, but the word Mormon. And it's going to cause some some conflicts in how people look at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and equate it with Mormons, then equate it with bad Mormons, and it's just not a good look. Um, so they're working that all out. Uh, uh the church does, like I said, they do own the trademark on several things, Mormon Channel, Mormon Book of Mormon, Mormon Messages, even the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, that trademark still exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just because they changed what we as members refer to ourselves as doesn't mean that we just abandoned the word Mormon completely. Mm -hmm. um, we, I mean, like, I, I think that I would guess that the church has a pretty good case. I, sure. I don't know much about intellectual property law or any at all. But um, I think they have they have a pretty good case. And like I said, they're not telling her she can't sell her book under the title Bad Mormon. You just can't sell the tank tops and the water bottles, <laughs> right? which uh, I think is fair. You know, and as a step further, we actually even have trademarked Win for Satan Tabernacle Choir, just in case. <laughs> 
So I'm going to guess that that was a big old Richie joke. What? I, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> Never. I've actually at this point now read or rather audible uh, the entire Bad Mormon book. When how bad is it? it and time. how Mormon is it? Uh, so so here's the thing. Um, I So I listened to it and uh, I don't know. I had given zero thought as to what it might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a it's a memoir, so it's her life and her engagement with Mormonism, mm-hmm. and and for the most part, it's um, I, I mean, I don't know. It's like I thought about okay. this, and I kind of struggled about this, and you know, and then uh, this is when I sort of broke free. Uh, the the way that I suppose I would summarize it very quickly, if someone's like, I'm thinking about reading that, what do you think? I think that I would say there there are some things that she says that very clearly you understand where she stands on things and they feel maybe tiny jabbies at mm-hmm. the church. Like, sure. well, because the patriarchy, you know, those kind of things. Well, because yeah. women don't have rights. And it's like, okay. I don't I don't think women don't have rights. I think that, you know. Right parse those words a little differently i think that you're intentionally being inciting but but right. the one but the one sort of thing that i was like okay okay this i maybe if i would have thought for 2 seconds i would have known uh that something like this would be a part of the book she talks a considerable amount about the temple ceremony ooh and and it's hard it's hard for me to be offended and i wasn't because mm-hmm. i just don't you know i'm i'm I don't feel like I'm that person that's like, oh, but I definitely was like, I mean, you did not need the reason why this is here is so that people that don't have any idea about this can go, that's so weird. What is that? And and that members of the church can go, I can't believe that you would include this in here. And there would be everything around that. It's not pertinent necessarily Mm -hmm. for the most part to her story. But, you know, she expresses what most of us expressed, which is when you go to the temple for the first time, it's weird. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. You just go where they tell you. Yeah. And people can't really warn you too much because, you know, we don't really talk about it. And could we do a better job than we did 20 years ago when she first went? Yeah. Do we? Yes. Is it great? No. We could do a better job still. But it definitely, it was one of those things that I came away from and was like, yeah, all right. I right. Can, I can say and, that I and, listened to it. Sure. I'm not a big reader, so that's not a book that I'm going to willingly pick up. But it's interesting to me. I mean, like, you're only going to try for that that trademark because you have a little bit of an axe to grind. I mean, mm-hmm. she she would have to know that how this is going to reflect on the church, you know, and sure. that's where it's like, eh, you're just doing it just to, you know, yeah. twist a little bit. Uh, and, which I think which I think if you you and I hope actually too to be able to talk to her because there are parts of her story that I would love to ask more questions about and find out more about. Um, But I think that if you asked her, Hey, is, is part of the reason why you said this this way or did this, this thing, she'd be like, yeah, (laughs) of course. If she was being honest, if she could be, if she could be that like, not self-aware. Yeah. Transparent. I think that. Yeah. She'd be like, yeah, of course I did it. That re- reason why. Uh, story right. number four, three, no, four. No, four. I You're can, right. I got it's this. Four. The Mitch, the Mitch doesn't You've read and, and can't count. <laughs> that sounds so accurate. I can read and I can count. I just mm-hmm. don't do public math. Ah. Okay, so Andy Reid, <laughs> Andy Reid just won the Super Bowl. So exciting. Um, with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh. Andy Reid, famously a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He, mm-hmm. He's done various publicity things at Light the World this, just this past December because um, they had giving machines in Kansas City. Anyway, he was in a pre-Super Bowl um, news conference, right? And a some of those questions that they come up with to ask the coaches, because there was another one with the Eagles coach, and I'm just like, who's writing these? Who are these journalists i don't know but they said um how do you like your coffee and uh like i said andy reed famously a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints played football at byu you know did all of the things uh he said uh you know 
I don't drink coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't drink it. And I can just see him like completely deadpanning that with his great mustache. And he says, I just get up and go. I got endless energy for a chubby guy. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I'm like, where are the journalists who are doing the research? Because, um, interesting question, you so, know? So I, so I think the opposite. I think they baited yeah. on some of these questions. Interesting. Okay. And, and, and not like they're trying to trap him, but he is sure. so media savvy and so likable that they go, oh, you know, how do you like your extramarital affairs? He's never been accused of an extramarital affair. Right. There's not anything like that, yeah. right? But, but, right. um, you know, well, I don't, I, you know, I don't do that, you know, and he'll be able to respond to such. The other thing about Andy Reid uh, is he's like the fifth winningest coach ever in the NFL, but, but, right. but also s- some sadness in his family. His son, yes. you know, passed away a few years ago and there there's a lot mm. of i mean he's been talking about like the research and the things that some of these guys could bring up i would much rather have them ask about his coffee or non-coffee habits than like hey how's it been since the loss of your son right. a couple of years ago <sighs> no you you bring up an excellent point you definitely do um they did ask him about his favorite rappers yeah did which... he candy <laughs> He's right. He said um, he struggled to come up with three rappers asking if the fat boys count as one, uh, <laughs> then offering Jay-Z, Master P and Lil Wayne before saying, you got to give me an easier question than that. And I'm sitting here going, if you asked any white person. That sounds terrible. OK, if you ask people who genuinely don't listen to rap, who their favorite rappers are. It's probably going to be Jay-Z, Master P, and Lil Wayne because that's mm-hmm. all they would come up with. Maybe Is that Eminem. all you would come up with? Probably. Well, I mean, unless we went back into the archives with like MC Hammer. Okay. okay. And uh, that famous rapper Vanilla MC Ice. Hammer. <laughs> Maybe he's not. I, I don't think he's a rapper. I appreciate, I appreciate um, you proving does... your own point right now so hard. So hard. Does vanilla ice count? I mean, uh, I will give it to you. <laughs> I will give it to you. If you asked me, I would say Eminem, Snow. I love Eminem. And Ski Lo. Ski Lo. It's, it's like my theme song. I do wish I was a little bit taller. Yeah, I wish you were a baller. If you had a girl, then you did, you would call her. That was the first CD I ever bought. Me too. At me too. Is that? I got it at a uh, Tower Records. Okay. And I also got um Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, cracked so, review. Everyone had that absolutely. album. Absolutely. I course. saw them at Wolf Mountain. Where's Wolf Mountain? It's it it's what is now the Canyons. What's the Canyons? It is what is now <laughs> Park City Mountain Resort, the other part there of Park is. City Mountain Resort. Okay. So I didn't grow up here. So no. I um no. that, don't know the history, but uh yeah, that was before Darius Rucker became the country star. Yep. Um, Which, by the way, for my money, Wagon Wheel by Darius Rucker, the far greater version of that song. So I don't listen to country either. Okay, we digress. <laughs> Move on. Story number five. <laughs> Story number five. First area-wide FSY event for the Middle East and North Africa area, Africa North area. 200 youth came together in the United Arab Emirates for um, FSY conference. Uh, There was youth from Qatar, Bahrain, Morocco, Egypt, Israel, Kuwait, Jordan, Oman, and Iraq. Um, So, so cool. Uh, They, it said um, FSY counselor Diego Torres called it a monumental event for the youth who might be the only ones who belong to the church in and around the cities where they live. And looking at the pictures, it looks like a lot of them are kids of expatriates who live out there um, in those areas working probably for the uh, various governments. I don't know mm-hmm. if it would all be American governments, probably some others as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one participant, uh, Shiloh Olson, spoke about how her faith grew through the conference. Quote, there has been a time where I have struggled about my faith, and I think this has really given me a boost to see that Jesus Christ really loves me and he's always there for me. So pretty cool. Um, uh, Elder Bednar called in remotely to talk to the youth. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, they assembled 3,500, 
3,500 hygiene kits for people in need as part of the service project for the Sikh temple in Dubai. So wow. really, really cool, really cool stuff happening for them. Um, what a blessing for those youth in that area of the world. Absolutely. Who don't get to just go down to BYU or the U and hang out for a few days. You know what they do have, though? The Little Lessons Podcast, which they can get a new episode every week. Be sure and check out Megan the Mitch Mitchell. Uh, I appreciate you coming and sharing the news which you have shared. It was so fun, Richie. Thank you.